Hey guys, so today we will be discussing about what is a Jacobian matrix and how can we use it. So what is a Jacobian matrix? Uh, it is a relationship between the joint velocities and the end effector velocities in simple words. That is we can say that this gives us the relation between the joint velocity and the end effector velocities. For example, we have the matrix x dot, y dot, and z dot, and y, wx, wy, and wz. We will not be calling this as w, we will refer to it as omega, that is omega x, omega y, and omega z. The first three rows or the first three points or the coordinates, we have the linear velocities. And the last three point, uh, last three coordinates of the rows, that is omega x, omega y and omega z will give us the angular velocities. I hope you are familiar with what is linear velocity and what is angular velocity. And then on the RHS we have j. This is the Jacobian matrix. And over here we have q1 dot, q2 dot till qn dot. These q are the joint variables that is each q is a joint variable now we are going to use this whole matrix that is this whole arrangement let me change the color this whole arrangement it will be used to calculate the end effector velocities with the joint velocities given that is here we will be calculating the joint velocities oh sorry we will be calculating the end effector velocities with the joint velocities given to us so now the important part or in the important properties of the j matrix is that it will always have the number of columns will be equal to the number of joints in the manipulator. For example, in a J matrix, the number of columns will be equal to the number of joints in the manipulator or the robot arm. For example, if we have three joints, then there will be three columns that is one, two and three in the Jacobian matrix. Now similarly, J matrix will always have six rows. That is the number of rows are fixed. That is one, two, three, four, five, six. And the number of columns will depend on the number of joints of the manipulator. I'll repeat it again. That is the number of rows are fixed. Whereas the number of columns will depend upon the number of joints present in the manipulator. So now let us consider different joints for which we will have different values. Suppose we have a prismatic joint and we have a revolute joint. Now there are different properties in order to find the linear and the angular velocities for revolute joint and a prismatic joint. Suppose we are first of all finding the linear velocities. So we will write it as 0 to i minus 1, 0, 0, 1. That is this part will be used in the matrix where we have a prismatic joint and we have to find out the linear velocities. And suppose we have a revolute joint and we have to find out the linear velocities. Then we will write it as r0 to i minus 1, 0, 0, 1 into d0 to dn minus 1, sorry d0 to dn minus d not to or d0 to di minus 1 here n is the number of joints and d over here is the displacement now let us come to the second part that is when we have to find out the angular velocities that is the rotational part 
this was the linear part now for the rotational part in a prismatic joint as we know that a rotation in a prismatic joint we cannot rotate anything suppose we can only move it forward or backward in a prismatic joint there is no rotation whereas in a revolute joint we can move it up and we can move it down as well so we can rotate a revolute joint but we cannot rotate a prismatic joint so you, over here we will simply write 0 0 0 and now here we will write r 0 to i minus 1 0 0 1 that is these are the notations which will be used in order to fill the j matrix over here now consider let us take an example we are given the linear velocities that is x dot y dot and z dot and the angular velocities that is omega x omega y and omega z and we have to write the Jacobian matrix over here and here we will get the uh, joint variables that is suppose we have three prismatic joints that is we will only have prismatic joints so there will only be translation there will be no rotation so we will write d1 d2 dot and d3 dot and say we have three joints so there will be three columns that is column one column two and column three as defined earlier or as told earlier we will always have six rows in a jacobian matrix that is this is the jacobian matrix j and this is the uh, <coughs> these are the end effector velocities and this is the uh, joint velocities these will give us the joint velocities and this will give us the end effector velocities which we have to find now let us come to the uh, other part suppose earlier let us recap what we studied just now we are here we wanted to calculate the end effector velocities such that the joint velocities were given now suppose we want to do the opposite let us say now we want to find the joint velocities and the end effector velocities are given to us the end effector velocities are given to us and we have to find the joint velocities so in order to do so we will simply take the jacobian matrix on the left hand side that is that is earlier we study this part we will simply take this uh, j matrix on the left hand side taking its inverse and now we will find the joint velocities this is this is the part for the joint velocities that is let me show it to you that is we will write it as j inverse x dot y dot z dot omega x omega y omega z is equal to x1 dot q1 dot sorry q2 dot and q3 dot so now we have the joint variables joint variables on the rhs that we have to find these are the angular linear and the angular velocities of end effector and this is the jacobian matrix which will be used to find out the uh, joint velocities with the end effector velocities given to us this is known as the inverse jacobian matrix so you only have to understand what the uh, jacobian matrix is used for and you should uh, learn these values that where what is used no questions will be given on it because it is a difficult concept to apply and so you should only know the theory part and you should know that what these things signify that is this, these are the joint variables these are the linear velocities these are the angular velocities and this is the jacobian matrix and the properties of jacobian matrix that is the number of columns will be equal to the number of joints in the manipulator and the number of rows will always be equal to six so these are all the properties that you should keep in mind and nothing else will be asked from this so i guess this is it 
and if you were able to understand this video just write wow in the comments and i'll get to know that you have understood this and it was <clears throat> this is it for this video so see you in the next one